Today I'm going to show you how to make an incredible chickpea curry. Chickpeas are coated in a generous blend of spices and aromatics, simmered until creamy, and finished with greens and fresh herbs. We're going to get started with the aromatics. Wow, that's heavy. We'll finally dice a large onion, doesn't matter if it's yellow or red. We're also going to mince up six garlic cloves and take a knob of ginger, about two inches, grate that up, and dice a serrano pepper, or two or three. This is where you can really moderate the heat of this curry. If you tend towards the baby mouth side of the spectrum, go ahead and use one. And if you're like off the scale, like a baby baby mouth, maybe take out the membranes from these. They will get moderated in the curry, so it's not going to be super spicy. Try not to just directly inhale it like I did just now. What I do recommend is immediately going to wash your hands. Soap it up! Ah, we are left with the task of putting this into our bowl and I have just washed my hands. I feel like I have done this before and yet I have not learned my lesson, but that's why I'm here. So you can learn my lessons and not repeat them. I don't think I mentioned this yet, but this is an Indian chickpea curry. So these four ingredients, onions, ginger, garlic, green chilies, or what I call the holy quaternity of Indian cooking. They create the flavor base for so many amazing Indian recipes. And that's how my mom taught me how to make my recipes and moms are never wrong. And if you're wondering, are we making a chana masala, Nisha? No, we are not, although I do love that. This is more of a creamy version with greens, some different spices, and it's pretty quick to make. We also need two Roma tomatoes. Oh, I'm pretty impressed I caught that. This is about one half pound or eight ounces of tomatoes. I like to cut the tomatoes pretty finely so they melt into the curry. And if tomatoes are truly horrible where you live right now because it's winter, you can use half of a 14 ounce can of diced or crushed tomatoes. And because this is an Indian curry, we of course need some spices. So I've got my Indian masala dabba here. And the two whole spices we're gonna use today are cumin seeds and coriander seeds. Want a heaping teaspoon of the cumin seeds and two teaspoons of the coriander seeds. I'm also gonna use some curry leaves in this recipe. So if you're thinking, I don't have those, I'm not gonna make this recipe, bye, stay, because they're optional. But if you have an Indian grocery store, I highly recommend seeking fresh curry leaves out. They are like low key, a superstar ingredient. Not low key for like Indian people, because we already know they're amazing, but low key for everybody else who might not be familiar with them. It smells so good. For this recipe, I'm gonna use maybe 15 fresh curry leaves. They obviously vary in size. So if yours are really large, you can use less. And if they're really small, you can use more. And for our ground spices, we're using some pretty common spices that you should have at home or easy to find at any grocery store. A teaspoon of ground coriander, a teaspoon and a half of curry powder, a half teaspoon of ground cinnamon, quarter teaspoon of turmeric, and a half teaspoon of freshly grated nutmeg. Everything that needs to be prepped is ready, so I'm gonna grab my tiny stove and get to cooking. Medium high heat. Pro tip, if you have a stainless steel pan and you feel like the food sticks too much, let the pan heat up dry for a minute and a half or two. Then add your oil and let that heat up for a little bit and your food will stick a lot less. We're gonna add two tablespoons of oil. This is avocado oil. And we'll add in our cumin and coriander seeds. What we're doing is toasting our spices in oil. This is called blooming. And the reason I like to do this is because spices are fat soluble. So you're gonna unlock lots of hidden aromas and flavors when you toast them in a fat source. This shouldn't take long. You just wanna get them a few shades darker and it'll smell really aromatic. Now for our curry leaves, if you're using fresh, have your lid handy because these will sputter up. That's because there's a lot of moisture in the leaves so they're interacting with the hot oil. And this really only needs like 20 seconds so don't do it for too long. If you're using dried curry leaves, this will not happen, so don't worry. Now we're gonna add in our onions, hit them with a little salt, and show you what it looks like so far. And because we dice those onions pretty finely, they won't take too long to get some color on them, maybe five minutes. If you feel like things are starting to get a little toasty, maybe too toasty, add a splash of water to the plate. Time for our other aromatics, the jar, garlic, <laughs> the garlic, ginger, and green chilies. Oh. This is when the serrano peppers are activated. You'll know. Your nostrils and your throat pipe, they'll know. I don't know what the medical term is for a throat pipe. Larynx? Now we are ready to add tomato paste, two tablespoons of this, and those ground spices. You wanna stir vigorously now, otherwise the spices will burn. <coughs> this is where you might sneeze a little bit. And we have some stuff sticking to the bottom, so let's add in our water. You wanna stir this pretty vigorously for maybe 90 seconds, because now we're gonna add in our tomatoes. Tomatoes need about five minutes, so in the meantime, I'm gonna drain our chickpeas. And this is pretty much a perfect recipe to me. It's got so much flavor. It's relatively easy to make. It's got protein, fat, fiber, even greens. Honestly, the only thing that would make it even more perfect is if it were like 
a 30 minute meal, but good Indian food requires this layering of flavors and you can't rush that process. You can't just like dump some curry powder into a soup pot and call it a curry. I'm sure you've seen those recipes online. We're not doing that. We wanna build an actually super flavorful, delicious curry. So once it's like nicely softened like this, that's when you add the rest of the ingredients. Chickpeas, just toss to coat. I'm just using canned chickpeas today because I wanna keep things relatively quick. But if you're the kind of person who makes their own beans from scratch, more power to you, this will be even more delicious. Now we're gonna add our coconut milk. This is what makes this curry creamy and velvety. Wow, it is so beautiful already. I have to show you. We're also gonna add a very untraditional ingredient, tahini. What the heck is this a Middle Eastern sesame paste doing in my Indian curry? It's gonna add an additional layer of richness and a subtle nuttiness, but you're not gonna taste tahini. It's just gonna be like this kind of subtly hidden ingredient. And this is similar to my red lentil curry that I know a lot of you love, where I use almond butter. Again, you don't taste the almond butter, but it does add that noticeable richness. And a half cup of water, so it's not too thick. Once she's simmering, you're gonna cover it and simmer for 15 to 20-ish minutes. I forgot an important step, salt. I was supposed to add it with the tomatoes. I didn't, we're gonna add it now. And black pepper, it's going to activate the curcumin in the turmeric, stir that in. Oh, also one more thing, sugar. Just a tiny bit to balance everything out. You can use any sugar. I'm using coconut sugar today and just a half teaspoon. Normally I would have added the sugar with the coconut milk. All right, while this simmers, we're gonna do a few things. First, we're gonna make some rice to serve with the curry. I like using my Instant Pot for this because it is very hands-off. As I mentioned, we've got some greens in this curry. I am using Swiss chard today. It is one of those vegetables that's so good for you that I kind of forget to eat most of the time. So this is a great way to get it into your diet, get it into your kids' diets, get it into your picky partner's diets. I'm pointing over here because my picky partner, Max, is behind the camera over there. First, we're gonna wash it and then we'll finally chop it up. You can make this curry with any green. So if you wanna skip the chard, you can use kale, you can use pre-bagged baby spinach or baby kale too. Got some fresh herbs, cilantro and mint, and these will be used as a finishing ingredient. I'm not measuring these, but I'd say a large handful of each. And if you only have one or the other herb, that's totally fine too. All right, it's been about 20 minutes. Now we're gonna add in our greens. The greens need to simmer for about five minutes. If you're using something more tender like baby spinach, it probably just needs a minute or two. Last couple of things, we're gonna add two teaspoons of garam masala once the greens have wilted. Garam masala is often used as a finishing spice like this and it adds this incredible, bold, slightly sweet, warm flavor. I usually like to add a little more salt now because once you add the greens, they start to draw out some of the salt that's already in there. A Little bit of lemon juice to brighten everything and our cilantro and mint. Yum! This looks so good. Wow. I can't tell you how good it smells. When I was growing up, people used to make fun of me because my house smelled like curry. And honestly, now I'm just like, y'all are stupid. Curry smells delicious. And you would be so lucky if your house could smell like it. I want to live in this. Time for a taste test. Would you look at this? It's so beautiful. It's creamy. It's got that nice green color from the herbs and the greens. It's warming, it's comforting, it's creamy, it's got a little freshness from the mint. And if you want even more delicious at vegan Indian recipes, I've got a short playlist for you right here. Bye-bye. Tomatoes.